Thanks so much for your time. I am Pius Kojo Baka. To our very first story, latest data from the Ghana Statistical Service shows that Ghana's economy grew by 4.7% in the first quarter of 2024. This indicates a 1.6 percentage uh, percent increase compared to the same period in 2023. Here's government statistician, Professor Samuel Kobneni. In the first quarter of 2024, from a GDP oil perspective, the economy in current terms was 266.7 billion Ghana cities. And from a non-oil perspective, the economy worth was 256 billion Ghana cities, indicating about a 10 billion Ghana cities between, a, between oil and, an, and a non-oil perspective. Between current prices and constant prices, after adjusting for the effect of price changes, the worth of the economy in the first quarter of 2024 was 51 billion Ghana cities. And from a non-oil perspective, the worth of the economy was 48.4 billion Ghana cities, indicating about 2.5 billion Ghana cities, constant terms between oil and non-oil GDP perspective. From a constant perspective, the economy in the first quarter of 2024 grew by 4.7%, and from a non-oil perspective, the economy grew by 4.2% relative to the respective growth rates of 3.1% and 4.4% for the same time period in the first quarter of 2023. This indicates that the worth of the economy has grown by 1.6 percentage points between the first quarter of 2023 relative to the first quarter of 2024. From a basic prices perspective, that is when we've now adjusted for the influence of taxes, subsidies, and transport, the worth of the economy in the first quarter of 2024 was 250.7 billion Ghana cities from an oil perspective, with the inclusion of net indirect taxes, which was 15.9, 16 billion Ghana cities. The worth of the economy from a current prices perspective was 266.7 billion Ghana cities. The agriculture sector contributes the least to the growth rate in the economy. The services sector contributes, contributes the most with a lead of 45.6%, followed by industry 30.6% and agriculture 23.8%. And already we know the drivers of the growth in the first quarter of 2024, according to the Ghana Statistical Service, were mining and querying, which contributed 12.9%, information and communication uh, pegging some 17.9%, crops and, uh, by 4.3%, construction 8.2%, and accommodation and food service activities 9.4%. And it is a reason why we want to interrogate the figures and bring on to Zoom as we speak, um, Professor uh, Patrick Isumin, an economist, to help us appreciate these numbers. Thanks so much, Professor Isumin, for agreeing to speak to us on Business Live. Now, pretty remarkable, you would say, isn't it? Good evening, and uh, good evening to viewers. Thanks for having me. I think, obviously, if you look at the headline number of 4.7%, uh, that looks quite uh, strong and impressive. Mm. But I think that when you look at the detail, you begin to see that perhaps the headline number belies some of the difficulties and some of the challenges the economy is facing. I think the, the first thing you look at is that you look at the sectors that are expanding and the sectors that are contracting. Mm. There are about 20 sec subsectors in total, and six of them, which is about 30% of the sectors, are contracting. So I think that while we think that the overall growth number looks good, I think when you begin to look at the disaggregation, you begin to see that perhaps oh, it's not it's not as good as uh, the headline number suggests. All right. The other thing is the Go other ahead. thing is that if you look at which sectors are contracting, you see, for instance, electricity subsector contracting by 7.5 percent. Those begins to get us to get a little concern, in spite of what the what our headline number says. All right, so 4.7%, how would you interpret this in our relation to uh, basically, in our quest basically, I should say, for economic recovery? I think that, I mean, we can't, so uh, again, you know, the headline, number, the headline number is good compared to all that we did last, last year, all the four quarters, and in particular the last quarter, but we can't, charged solely based on one quarter. Don't forget that these are also primarily uh, estimates and projections, primarily. 
and that over time, as uh, more data comes in, there are, there are chances that it could be revised. So in the whole scheme of things, I think this suggests that we are recovering, but like I've pointed out, when we begin to look at some of the details, we, we need to understand that there are still significant weaknesses in some sectors of the economy that have to be addressed. All right, talking about comparison, um, let's do this. Compared that to the same quarter last year, we saw growth in agriculture representing some 4.1% in the first quarter of 2024. Now, the industry sector growth was 6.8%. Um, and in the services sector, we saw growth uh, recording 3.3%. Quarter on quarter growth was 1.1% uh, and 1.8% and of course 0.9% respectively. Now, industry suffered greatly in times past. Is this a sign of um, the worst? No, so I think you have to, when you put them side by side, you have to look at uh, first, of course, the industry sector as a group has uh, has expanded, and it's now the, it's not the highest growth in the in the period. Now, but at the same time, you have to understand that the services sector, which had primarily been the biggest, uh, has seen the highest growth in time past, it has declined. So it's a combination of industry beginning to recover a little bit, and the services also declining. The services group declining a little bit. But yeah, I think we always should even look within the disaggregate. I think within the industry itself, you see that uh, uh, mining and quarrying and construction are the ones that did relatively well. Don't forget that our oil production is counted in the mining and quarrying sector. So if you look at manufacturing, for instance, the growth rate was a paltry 2.2%. Uh, so I think we should not always get too visited on the the, the overall aggregate and not begin. We need to dig, especially since the Staska service has been extremely helpful these days, providing us a lot more detail. We need to look into the detail and begin to figure out where, where things are. But overall, I think when you see industry growing, we, we should see it as a good thing. But, you know, I think it would have been, it would have been more, it would have been a bigger celebration for me if it was manufacturing that was expanding at uh, double the gates rather than uh, mining and quarrying. That doesn't mean that mining and quarrying is, is not. The other thing you have to understand is that if you look at Ghanaian participation in the economy, mm. the mining and quarrying sector is dominated by foreign multinationals. And in some sense, those have become enclave sectors. So when they are expanding, you know, their connection and their linkages with the other sectors of the economy is low. And the Ghanaian participation in those sectors are also relatively low. So if those sectors are the ones driving the growth, you shouldn't expect that many ordinary Ghanaians will benefit too much from that kind of growth. Mm. And, and worrying, though, is electricity, which contracted by 7.5%. Are you concerned? Absolutely. And actually, electricity sector has been declining since uh, 2022. If you go back and check the data. so. It's no, it's no surprise that we've seen uh, the kind of uh, load shedding or load management or whatever it will be called. We, 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 it's something that we've all been feeling that we are not producing enough electricity and the numbers clearly bear it out. We know, given the importance of the electricity sector and the energy sector as a whole for our economy, I think it's something that we really need to pay a lot of attention to and resolve the energy sector difficulties once and for all. Otherwise, we know that uh, it's hard to see manufacturing doing very well when electricity production is declining. All right. And uh, as we wrap up the conversation, based on these figures, uh, what will be your recommendations to government? I think it, the, the, the still, so overall, this, this shows that perhaps uh, things, things are not getting as bad as it could be. But at the same time, it also shows that there are significant weaknesses. I think the, you know, the policymakers should not be too swayed by the overall head, headline number and start thinking that we are out of the woods, yes, because we know that when you look at the disaggregated numbers, there are significant weaknesses. So they should begin to, to look into those. I particularly will highlight what you just mentioned, the electricity sector. I think you really need to do a lot to boost production electricity so that uh, you know, we'll be on a more sustainable path to recovery. 
Very well. But before you go, um, quickly, uh, Dr. Patrick, uh, Professor Isumin, I should say. Now, IMF has set June 28th as board meeting date to consider Ghana's second review and, of course, possible approval and disbursement of the $360 million for the country. Um, what are you looking forward to? Well, I generally don't expect that there will be any impediment. I expect the IMF board to approve uh, because the when they issued the staff level agreement back in April, I think the only condition they put before the staff level agreement go to the board for approval was the MOU with the official creditor committee, the uh, private bilateral creditors. And since the government says that it has the MOU, I, I don't expect that there should be any glitches. I expect that the IMF board will approve. And then subsequently, the, the next one should be released. Professor Patrick assuming always a delight to have you on, speak to us here on Business Life. Thanks so much, sir. Now, let's shift focus from that and touch on the story that this inflation trend is expected to continue, but at a moderated pace, despite the appreciation of the CD and expected petroleum price hikes. Now, according to GCB Capital, the near-term inflation profile now appears elevated with the laggard impact of CD depreciation, transport fare hike, among others, set to moderate the pace of this inflation in the second half of the year. There is more in this report. The research by GCB Capital revealed that the continuous disinflation will be driven largely by favorable base drift, which should sustain the decline in year-on-year -year inflation. It expects the imminent main crop harvest season to boost disinflation from the food basket. Furthermore, it said the imminent completion of the second review of Ghana's program with the International Monetary Fund and the release of catalytic funding should improve the foreign exchange reserve, cushion and trigger a marginal correction, sustaining the disinflation trend. Ghana's consumer price inflation eased again in May 2024, reaching a 26th month low of 23.1%. This follows another base included decline in the overall and the food consumer price index year on year. GCB Capital said though it expected the decline, the pace was slower than envisaged. This is as a result of the simmering price pressures from the pass-through of the CD depreciation, transport fare hikes and seasonal effect on food prices. This is still Business Life. We are back with more after this break. Welcome back to the program. McDonald Group, um, through its shipping and logistics business, has secured government's blessings to review Ghana's prestigious shipping line, the Black Star Line. The move is coming after years of struggle to secure a strategic partner to revive the shipping line, which was once known for transporting major commodities from the country. Executive Chairman of the McDonald Group has been speaking to Joy Business about the initiative in Bahamas. We are bringing in a um, vessel, the first two vessels that we have... Uh we are bringing in, the first one will be around 15,000 metric tons. Uh, the second one will be about 12,000 metric tons. So this should be enough to start moving the continent. So very soon. Uh, Chairman, you, what, what, is, what is the drive behind this Black Star Line takeover for you? You've distinguished yourself in several areas. I'm asking this is a very tricky area that you still want to do it. But don't, don't forget that I've been in shipping for 33 years. This is nothing new. This is, this is, this is my field. And uh, it's about time we take over our own continent. We cannot stay, live in a continent where the foreigners control the space. Whoever controls the seas control the business. So uh, we can't leave that space. I mean, as patriotic as I am, I can't afford being in the, in, the, in the area for 33 years and not trying to take over the space. Uh, it's not likely that for 33 years we should leave the space for foreigners to... Chairman, finally, what do you tell those who are the, the skeptics who are worried about... Some will say that your fingers might be bent, black star line, the problems, the stigma, the challenges is that you can turn things around. It's okay. I'm a businessman. Uh, I'm not worried if I fall, but I, I think I have, I have been here long enough to know the risks I'm, I'm taking. 
Back home in Ghana, Senior Commercial Officer at the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Kofi Addo, has called on businesses in the cassava, fruit and cosmetic sectors to adopt sustainable solutions and innovations to enhance their access to the international market. He delivered these remarks at the third cluster international conference held in Accra. United Nations Industrial Development Organization, in partnership with the European Union and the Ministry of Trade and Industry, hosted the third cluster international conference in Accra to enhance the inclusiveness of small and medium enterprises within industrial clusters. During the event, Senior Commercial Officer Kofi Addo, speaking on behalf of the Minister of Trade, stressed on the critical need to transform local businesses to make them competitive. Everything that we are doing is to make sure that we transform the MSME, especially in the African sub-region, we see the MSME as the backbone. If it is the backbone, then it means we have to treat it with all the things that it requires. Recently, if you see the way progress, special niche products from Ghana and other ECOWAS region is penetrating into the national and international market, then the confidence is that if we really put our hearts in order, we will be able to take the world by storm. The UNIDO representative to Ghana and Liberia, Stavros Papastavru, emphasized the importance of collaboration in advancing industrial clusters to foster sustainable economic development. Industrial clusters provide a unique ecosystem where businesses can collaborate, share resources, and innovate together. We offer SMEs access to larger markets, new technologies, systems, and vital business networks. This collaborative environment is essential for fostering resilience and competitiveness, particularly in a rapidly changing global market. At Unido, we believe in the power of partnerships and collaborative effort efforts. We are committed to supporting policies and initiatives that strengthen industrial clusters. Dr. Charles Kwamesaki, Chief Technology Advisor of Wacom Ghana, highlighted the project achievement and integrating them into larger markets. We believe that when we produce goods, all the goods we see on the various tables that are being displayed, if we do not buy them, it never translates into income for our SMEs. So we believe in a number of activities that we've implemented, going on international fairs, local fairs, regional fairs, to make sure our SMEs connect and sell their product. We have worked credibly in connecting our SMEs to various financial institutions. Several small and medium enterprises shared their experience on how the project has significantly improved their operations and market access. So we can boast of getting all the certification um, for, um, for export and then everything. They've helped me improve on my branding and packaging to the international level. They've also assisted in our, my products being registered with the FD. So far, the packaging has also improved. Now, we have a product even with people in Hungary. We have some also in Germany and then in the UK. The conference gathered over 200 participants, including SMEs, supported by the EU-funded West African Competitiveness Program and delegations from ECOWAS and Austria, aimed at reinforcing connections to the African continental free trade area. Now, as part of activities to mark its 25th anniversary, the Institute of Directors Ghana has donated assorted items to the Jowulu Special School. Now, speaking at a short ceremony to hand over the items and also spend time with the students, Vice President of the Institute, Mary Asari Abuai, explained that the Institute is committed to supporting less privileged institutions. Here's a report. With a vision to become the leading reference point for directorship, leadership and governance, the Institute of Directors Ghana is poised to champion best practices in corporate governance. As part of its Silver Jubilee celebrations, the Institute donated assorted items to Jowlu Special School. This year's donation marks the third time the Institute has spent time with students of the Jowlu Special School and provided the school with items to support its daily operations. Mary Asari Yabwa is the Vice President of the Institute. Indeed, we champion good corporate governance, but we also do things like looking at citizens within the country and give the help and support that is necessary. You would agree with me that the Jowulu Special School for Intellectually Challenged Children is really a good cause to support. 
we are here to make sure that we impact the lives of people who don't really have everything it takes to be the very best they can be. So with this kind of support, we do hope to share our love and our concern for them. The chairman of the Silver Jubilee Planning Committee and council member of the institute discussed activities to mark the 25th anniversary. 25 years of championing good corporate governance in this country. As you may be aware, the spectrum of corporate governance has now expanded into environmental, social and governance. And so our institute is poised to be able to guide various institutions, various boards in the area of ESG, that is environmental, social and governance. He reiterated the institute's mandate to promote excellent corporate governance in institutions. IOD Ghana organizes lectures. We also have courses that we run for board members of various institutions. We have had companies actually invite the resource persons of IOD to come and specifically tailor training needs to their board members. IOD has been very active, very, very active, moving to these institutions and running training programs for them. The headmaster expressed gratitude for the donation. This school is a government institution and government alone can meet the needs of these kids. So when I see things like this, it gladdens my heart and it helps us take very good care of this case. And I'm going to, I also want to see the opportunity to, to invite other organizations, churches, individuals who have this case at heart to also support us. The donated items included bags of rice, cartons of milk, crates of eggs, beverages, toiletries and other essentials. And that's it for the bulletin. I am Pius Kojo Baka. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. Bye.